And now let's try and tune in to no good music from an undisclosed location somewhere in New Jersey. That style, the playing guitar. When that comes on, you're out on the dance floor. Miami still rocks, man. Am I going to listen to this again? And that's definitely going to be a theme. (laughs) You can't make this shit up. No. So, hello, everyone. This is Ram. And this is Matt. And we are um, doing a little remote podcast special tribute to Sinead O'Connor today. Right. I don't know good music. Yes. So, um, yeah. Matt and yeah, I... Yeah, so it's been a few days. It's been a few days since uh, Sinead passed away here. Yeah, Sinead passed away on Wednesday of this week. Um, this is unedited, by the way, so you'll... Don't drop no f bombs now. Yeah, you might hear some strange sounds. So, Rob, we we knew we'd, we'd be sitting here, you know, within a, a couple years uh, doing this mm-hmm. podcast for her, with her, about her. You know, we could kind of feel that. Yeah, sadly. Well, Sinead's. Um, I mean, a lot of people probably already know this, uh, just because of the last couple of days, all the articles on Sinead and even if you didn't yeah know too much about her maybe you you do now but her son passed away last year in January and I kind of thought it was coming sooner than later right okay. right because over and, the uh, years mm-hmm. yeah Rob I got a uh, I've got her la- latest tweet her final tweet uh mm-hmm. to read if if okay. I if I may Sure. Because it talks about it talks about him. Uh, which son was that that passed just recently? I think it was. I think his name was Jake. Okay, hey, Jake. Yeah, we're going to reference him later too. He uh, he sings on uh, one of the songs on one of her albums, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, does his own little tune. But uh, Sinead, her uh, this would be about ten to fourteen days before her death. She tweeted. Quote, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt you. His name was Shane. We want to get that. Shane. Okay. Yeah, we want to get all that right. right. So, so, all right. Yeah. I, so uh, Shane um, passed away uh, not too long ago. Jake uh, sings on one of her albums that I'll reference later. Yeah, he's 36. So, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So her latest tweet uh, was, quote, been living as undead night creatures since. He was the love of my life, the lamp of my soul. We were one soul and two halves. He was the only person who ever loved me unconditionally. I am lost in the bardo without him. End Mm -hmm. quote. So that's her latest tweet. And that, how long ago was that? Was that like maybe I'm. I don't have a date on that. I'm thinking Mm -hmm. it's uh, it's from uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's not long ago. And then she posted a video um, about 10 days ago from her apartment. And that was on Twitter. Because I I think the main reason was that people didn't think that was her account. You know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. And And uh, we, um, and we, yeah. And that, that, that was Twitter that I just read. That was a tweet. Okay. Yeah, I... I deleted my Twitter account a while ago. I never had one. Never had one. And now it's a big X, you know. There's no little Tweety Bird. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I'm a big on, X. And now I'm on threads, and I'm like, why am I on here? Because I never really <laughs> liked Twitter to begin with. Yeah, yeah. I found... Well, uh, listen, Rob, I had... Oh, go on. Yeah, we're going no, go to be talking over, talking over you, each you know, other a little bit. Because uh, like I said, this yeah. is unedited, so... The normal yeah. podcast, if we do that, you know, you don't, we polish it up, but 
<laughs> right, right, right. But this okay. is a delay. There's del yeah. there's about a second or two here. Yeah. So uh, what I was saying is I really have an affinity for Sinead. I really have a closeness because, uh, you know, born in the same year. She was born the 8th of December, 1966. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be, um, yeah, so six months younger than me. But, uh, you know, being about our age, you know, it makes it, uh, makes it real, you know. Yeah. And I have a, this is from a 2021 interview. Yeah. I have a little thing. Um, she was actually thinking then, and she, well, I heard that she had tried to commit suicide like eight times in the past. Right. Now, it hasn't been released how she died, but we're assuming it could have been pills. It, you know, I, we don't know. But with right, her, and people aren't even talking about that. Nobody's even, uh, you and I didn't even mention it to each other uh, personally. Yeah. But she's always hinted at it, and like I said, with her the death of her son, it, she was so close. I mean, she's had four kids, but she was the closest, I think, to him. And uh, yeah. he committed suicide, and he was only like 17, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, this people, is people don't want to hear, you know, people don't want to hear the term committed suicide. You know, that that's not the... It's passe now. Oh, okay. it's died by suicide. Yeah, you got to leave the commit. You got to leave the commitment out of it. Okay. Just saying. Yeah. So this is interesting because it's it's about when she passes on. This is from an interview in 2021. Yeah. She said, and this is instructions to her children. She right. said, she said, see when the artists are dead, they're much more valuable when the than when they're alive, and we know that. I mean, look at Elvis. <laughs> Elvis yeah. was probably worth like a couple million, and now he's probably yeah. worth 500 million. Um, she said, Tupac has released way more albums since he died than he ever did alive, and it's kind of yeah. gross what record companies do. So she said, that's why I've always instructed my children since they were very small, if your mother drops dead tomorrow, before you call 911, call my accountant and make sure the record companies mm -hmm. don't start releasing my records and not telling you where the money is. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, problem, she knows. The problem there is if the record companies actually do own her music, there's really nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I would hope that yeah, we don't know her contracts and all that. Yeah. We don't know what she's, you know, how, where she is with the, the royalties. Yeah. Now I would yeah. hope, I just thought of this. I would hope that maybe down the line, there's a, maybe a tribute album, you know, mm -hmm. of her songs and yeah. without, without Cardi well, B along those, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look, along those lines, did you hear that uh, Morrissey of Smith's and solo fame, Morrissey put out a statement. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. Did you read that? Read that? Mm -hmm. You did? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That no, basically nobody really cared to help her until, you know, they, they didn't show a concern until mm -hmm. after she died. Something right, right. Like and, when she, and when she's dead, she can't respond, you know. Yeah. Because we know what Sinead would say. She'd say, F you. <laughs> yeah. F you, 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 you bastards. You, look what, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she can't respond now. Yeah. Is what Morrissey says, too. Yeah. But we've we've talked about Sinead before. You know, some of these artists that are make like, I mean, maybe they are big fans. They just didn't post about her or anything. But doing a music podcast, we definitely talked about Sinead. We both yeah. read her book, Remembering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about the book the book is on, only out recently it's one of the more recent books that i've read um and uh yeah a lot of people don't know uh we're going to talk later about her relationship or lack of relationship with prince uh, but that's outlined in that book yeah yeah matt matt's not a as much of a reader as i am although it, it takes this book i just started i'm probably Two months in, and I'm on page fifty. So, at you know, yeah, yeah. finding time to read. <clears throat> yeah, but my wife and I, 
we've been kind of following Sinead over the last years and just it's it's just a sadness it was a sadness and like i said it it's and we'll probably say it a couple of times it wasn't a big shock on wednesday mm-hmm. i was at work and my coworker said Sinead O'Connor died and mm-hmm. you know it it's that that statement that i thought i'd hear one day you know soon but yeah yeah and we all we all would assume it's suicide and not a car accident or something else or you know or certainly murder or something like that yeah yeah there's a uh, and you know i want uh, i'm hoping that uh, our listeners today can learn a few uh unique pieces of trivia that i learned today you know having followed Sinead for decades and uh, i still learned a few things so hoping they, they can get that today as well as uh you know i'm going to be bringing up uh what she was singing about you know her, mm-hmm. her, her subject matter was pain and healing you know it's yeah. it's all about that you know which uh which makes us love her more you know it makes us mm-hmm. mourn her more and makes us love her more right right and i hadn't really heard much about her until probably i think it was 2017 when she mm-hmm. posted a video i think it was on facebook about her mental mm-hmm. illness and yeah. she was basically living in a travel lodge in New Jersey, mm-hmm. in Hackett, right, right, Hackett, and she's so. right, and she's not far from you. And I'm like, I'm like, Rob, you, you know, you got an extra bedroom, you know. We I know. should, uh, <laughs> we should invite her over. I wanted and, to, uh, I, you know, I, I'm only half serious, half joking. You know, no, I thought about it. You know, if I could contact yeah. her in some way, but and yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it was. I don't remember. I I I know all the her childhood trauma with her mother, all that, Mm -hmm. especially more reading her book and our listeners go look for this book. If you like Sinead and, you know, even remotely, you know, you'll get a full understanding of her. Yeah. Yeah. When she was younger, but we hadn't heard from her in a while. And then it was just there, her video of her crying and just, Mm -hmm. totally desperate um so this has been going on probably her whole life but not in the public eye as much i think as far as what what she's been going through i want to tell you a little bit well i have a little bit of a bio if you don't know too much about her but she recently changed her name she's changed her name a couple times um yeah and she um converted to islam re- recently and i'm going to butcher this name but it was shuhada sadaqat Sata- she was going by and she was born Sinead marie bernadette o'connor <clears throat> so that was her real name Sinead o'connor and um Hey, on that note, uh, you know, Sinead was the mother of the doctor that delivered her as a baby. I have. I was just going to say that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. You've got yeah. that. Yeah. After Sinead de, de Valera. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, her debut album, The Lion and the Cobra, which we're going to, th- or I'm going to talk about, uh, released in 1987. Mm-hmm. Uh, and her second album, uh, I do not what what I want what I haven't got was 1990. So I knew about Sinead in 87. I'm trying mm-hmm. to think. <clears throat> I think with MTV, uh, you got to know about artists right away. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and well, a lot of let me uh, let me yeah. let me tell you about my memory there. So uh, at that point, uh, you said that. You got the album and mm-hmm. you loved it. Yeah. And I didn't get to borrow I didn't get to borrow it yet. I probably because I was listening to you, it all the time. <laughs> right, right. So I'm not gonna borrow it. Yeah. So you you you're so you're turned on the Sinead and and you love the album and you say, Matt, playing at the TLA, the Theater of Living Arts in Philly. Let's go. Okay. I'm like, well, it's a it's a I don't know, it's a Wednesday. I gotta work. I was working in Lansdale, north of Philly. I'm like, nah, I can't, I got to work. I can't do it. So then like 
next week after that, I borrow the album and I love it. Okay. <clears throat> so it's a yeah, great regret. <clears throat> great regret missing her uh, in the fall, probably the fall of 87 um, in Philly seeing her and she would have been 20 years old doing that well now 20 years my memory is different because i could have swore i saw her at the beacon and uh that would have been 88 i saw her once yes so so we're talking about the same thing but i yeah yeah. no i think you saw her without me i did but i i was pretty sure it was the beacon okay theater i don't know it's no, so you, long ago. You saw her at the Beacon. No, no, I'm saying you saw her at the Beacon. Before that, she was at the TLA. Okay. And we okay. didn't go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I, I, I regret yeah. not not going to that. Yeah. We both didn't go to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that was, was a smaller, a yeah. and that was a small, the TLA, is it just no seats? Oh, like I, I know, stage? I know. Yeah. But, but imagine, she is, she would have been two years younger than all of my kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she was a, a young woman, you know. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, belting out all the belting out those tunes. Yeah, and that small line place because the, yeah, the yeah. beacon's a little larger. But I yeah. can't, for the life of me, remember who I went with to see Shanae. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> Probably one of my girlfriends. Not that I had. Yeah, a lot, yeah. You know, the girlfriend at the no, time. No, no, no. Bit. no. Yeah, <laughs> one of my girlfriends. Yeah. Now most people know nothing compares to you. And so Matt and I are a little bit be, uh, ahead of ahead of the time because we were really into, or I was, or the um, album before that, which, yeah, like I said, I'm trying to remember if it even had any big hits. I think MTV just played my favorite, you know, is Mandinka, that song. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I liked her so i had a a skink which is a lizard and yeah, not not to be confused with skank yeah skink yeah um <laughs> <laughs> uh, and i named him mandinka and uh yeah 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 and i don't know if that was the lizard that met his untimely <laughs> demise That's in the wall I in the wall right was, yeah no yeah, you know, you lost a ferret in the wall yeah yeah we lost some animals in the we had paneling in our basement. Yeah, <laughs> and we should have freaking ripped it out. The paneling, I guess there was a little area back there behind. Oh, yeah. Our, yeah. Yeah, the wall. Mm-hmm. Mandenka. So, now, I didn't realize that Sinead had 10 studio albums because um, I probably, there was a, I have to admit, I haven't really listened to like any of her like newer albums recently right right and i'm with you i'm with you as i'm as i'm looking into her life now over the last three days i'm really finding that i don't know much except um you know that one song ghost land you know i don't know much at all from the last half of her career the last five albums yeah i'm just not i'm just haven't been into it been doing other things Yeah. yeah so there's so much to explore you know for our listeners you know uh, you know, catch on to some of the stuff that's our favorite here. Some of the stuff we think is uh, most excellent, but also there's so much of her life, you know, you know, there's much else she was doing in those decades. Yeah. I didn't realize she had an album out in 2017. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's kind of more, it's, it's other than pop. It's, uh, but I wouldn't say it's even rock, but it's, it's a little bit, Maybe I'm heavier than her normal mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, on the cover of the album, she's looks like she's wearing leather. <laughs> she's got a which good... album are you referencing? Her last album. Oh, okay. All right. 17, 2017. That's good. Yeah. Let me yeah, that's uh, good. see if I can. Uh, it's called uh, I'm Not Bossy, I'm the Boss. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I, I read about that one. Didn't, didn't listen to it. Read about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like, you know, caressing <laughs> or holding a guitar. Yeah, yeah. So did you um, did you get to read the uh, article? Um, yeah, I sent it to you. The the man who spent a year. He said, "I spent a year with Shanae, nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, um, I, did. I think his name is yeah. His name is Mike. Um, 
Can I reference that now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah, he found her to be, uh, he was at a, he knew of her and he, um, saw her was at a bar and waved to her and she came back and they were talking like old friends. So they spent time together. Um, you know, he doesn't describe, you know, how close they were, but they were close mm -hmm. and they just had a really good year. They, they kind of put both of their professional, uh, tr track on hold and, uh, he just described her as uh, as a great woman. It was just great time. Uh, they would watch uh, the show in the UK called Father Ted, I believe it is. I think oh, okay. it's a, a TV show, isn't that it? So uh, she just loved Father Ted. So mm -hmm. um, it's just amazing that like everything, <laughs> everything that she writes about and talks about and screams about. It's it's so it's so much related to the Catholic Church, and here she is for that year with him watching father ted it's just there's irony in there <laughs> yeah 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 but uh yeah i think it's, i think uh, it's interesting and that was probably was that like 87 like when our career that was, was 97 started? oh okay this was 97 that's yeah, yeah it she, was a decade after a career study she probably liked that he wasn't like overwhelmed or worshiping her as a rock star right. or it, that he mm -hmm. he was looked at her as a regular person and they they hit it off you know mm -hmm. they in the article he says about how the paparazzi would come around taking mm -hmm. pictures they're just out having coffee or brunch and they would laugh like little kids scamper away yeah <laughs> just laugh and giggle and, and and run away um i don't know like kids in the rain or something like that uh it's pretty funny mm -hmm. yeah and so this that kind of reporting is so cool. It's so good compared to when I'm watching the network. It's the same thing, Rob, the same thing. It's just she had this video from from uh, nothing compares to you where she cries. And then she tore up a picture of the Pope. And then I watched the next thing. It's the same thing. The next one, the same thing. It's yeah. uh, it's it's been uh, trite the mm -hmm. last few days. Yeah. So that's why I like that kind of journalism, you know, hearing from a guy that that spent uh, that, I guess, lived with her for a year. Yeah. Yeah. And that whole um, I never felt one way or the other. Um, I wasn't very I mean, I went to church, you know, I was raised mm -hmm. Lutheran. But when she did that, because mm -hmm. I'm a big Saturday Night Live, I hardly missed any shows, maybe. I don't know. Um, right. Right. But I know I saw that live. Didn't, yeah. didn't, I was probably kind of confused as to why she did it. Yeah. But right, now right. understanding if anyone has still offended by it, that they don't have many brain cells because it took right. the Pope six years after to admit to what was going on in the Catholic church, right. which is horrible. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. she was be when before her time, she was like, ahead of everybody else in her thinking and yeah, and that's why she's time. misunderstood mm -hmm. she's a very intelligent right. person right 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 so so we see that she's her middle names marie mother mm -hmm. of god mary mother of god marie and bernadette is a saint she's named after saints mm -hmm. she uh, you know that beautiful picture that they show on tv it's her with long black hair she looks about I'm going to guess eight. Okay. You've probably seen it if you've been watching the news. Yeah. I believe she's in a confirmation dress. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just church, church, church. The other thing I found out, I didn't learn this till, uh, till three days ago uh, when I was doing some reading. The picture of the Pope that Pope John Paul II went that she ripped up live on TV. Do you mm -hmm. know where that picture came from? Yeah. It, I think it, was, it was on, on her mother's her, wall. Yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got her mother's picture of the Pope and all of the the uh, the oppression and the abuse that she experienced from her mother and the church ripped up right there. It wasn't just yeah. a picture. It was her mm -hmm. mother's picture of the Pope yeah. off of their living room or kitchen wall. Mm -hmm. And that's I didn't know that till three days ago. Yeah. And her her yeah. mother died when she was like 15 or 16, as I recall. In a car accident. Yeah, yeah, right. But, she, but, um, uh, or eight, or even eighteen is what my memory tells me. But yeah, 
just and I right think, getting into adulthood. Yeah. And I think over the last years, she's forgiven her mother. Like, I think that was mm -hmm. a process maybe through therapy, not to mm -hmm. get over what she went through, but just to kind of move on in a way. I think it was in her book. I think, I think it was said that she had kind of forgiven her mother. I don't, yeah. You know. yeah. I'm wondering too, if her conversion to Islam had a piece of that, because it, I think it wasn't too long ago that she, uh, she uh, forgave her mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want to mention some. Her, um, oh, yeah, oh, speaking of speaking of, of the abuse and stuff, Rob. You know, it's um, even her brother uh, Joseph defended uh, her father. It says some of the early abuse in her life, but that he did agree that there was uh, her mother's quote extreme and violent abuse, both emotional and physical. So there's no doubt that that it happened. She keeps yelling it and, and screaming it, and and um, you know she. Even uh, back in 1993, Sinead even put a public letter out in the Irish Times and asked people to stop hurting me. And mm -hmm. she explained why. Wow. I mean, when you have to go to a major newspaper and write a, an open letter to the public and to everybody, you know, stop mm -hmm. hurting me. Uh, I mean, she's serious. The woman is serious, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, no holds barred. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. So it's just it's just amazing. So did you have anything else? Um, you know, hey, uh, when um, when she was, uh, you know, I can't remember because I don't have the article. Um, the, the man who spent a year with her in 97, um, he said she wouldn't talk about her music except one thing. She said, I want you to hear her. And she played for him uh, the one song she was really proud of. Maybe she's proud of a couple songs, but this one she was <laughs> proud of. And it was... Uh, you probably read it. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Oh yeah. She loved the way that it came out, and yeah. and just the full orchestration. Her voice. She loved it, and she said, "Well, let's look." She said, "You know, listen to this." And uh, yeah, I wanted to share that. So that was uh, mm -hmm. that was pretty amazing. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to wrap this up with um, talking about in the last year or two what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and then we'll get, then Matt and I are going to tell you our top five uh, favorite songs. It's hard for me because I have a lot of favorites, um, especially off the first three albums. But yeah. so anyway. Um, yeah, and me, and me too. So yeah, I mean, 10 would be easier, but that's our work, right? <laughs> it's a mm -hmm. try and narrow it down. Yeah. So yeah, you know, the fifth and sixth, I mean, the sixth and seventh and eighth songs, they're right there. You know, there's honorable mentions for sure. Oh, yeah. I have an honorable. <laughs> yeah. So, so what I had, so a couple years ago, uh, it was announced that Sinead was going to be at City Winery in Philadelphia. Uh, Matt and I saw Andrew Von Campen, great folk artist there that we interviewed, <laughs> and uh they have two sections. Uh, we, we were only in the, um, I don't know if they call that section the loft or the other sections. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a bigger... It was the back room. I call it the back room, but yeah, it was the okay. loft. Mm -hmm. But they have a bigger room. I don't know if it's upstairs or where it is, and that's where the bigger artists play. But I saw Sinead O'Connor was going to be there. And by the time I got in, of course, the tickets were sold out, and I was on a waiting yeah. list. So I was on a waiting list, never heard anything, and I assume she canceled. Uh, because on June 4th, 2021, Sinead announced her immediate retirement from the music industry. Mm -hmm. um, she did have a final studio album. This is the other thing. There was new music. I'm wondering if she actually recorded any vocals for any of this, but I guess we'll find out. And it was called No Veteran Dies Alone. That was the title of the album. Oh, wow. It was due to be released in 2022. And she stated, uh, this is in June 21, that she would not be touring or promoting it. And then announcing the news on Twitter, she said, this is to announce my retirement from touring and from working in the record business. I've gotten older and I'm tired. So it's time for me to hang up my nipple tassels. Yes. 
<laughs> I did not know, yeah. she said. Having truly given my all, given my all, NVDA, uh, the name of her album, in 2022 will be my last release, and there will be no more touring or promo. So we wonder where this album is. Um, yeah, then, I, I wonder, yeah. But then later on June 7th, three days later, she retracted her statement, describing the original announcement as a knee-jerk reaction to an insensitive interview. It wasn't ours, by the way. But no, we no, loved it. I wasn't good music. Yeah. yeah. And that she would be doing her already scheduled 2022 tour. Mm -hmm. So this might have been last year where she was supposed to be in Philly. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And then she so released... Is that is that album out? Did that album get out? No, no, not? nope. So maybe it maybe it is complete, and yeah, uh, maybe they'll be releasing it in a in a year, you know, nine months or so. It's yeah, what they often do when someone passes away. And then um, in this same period of time, she this is probably why she was more vocal on Twitter that she released her book, uh, Rememberings, was released on June first, twenty twenty one. Can't believe it was that okay. long ago that the book came out. I mean, it's only two years, but yeah, and, it feels uh, like a year ago. Yeah, and then, um, then of course, January seventh, twenty twenty two, her son died. Like I said, at age seventeen, and she decided right. to cancel her twenty twenty two tour. So that's why it was canceled, mm -hmm. and her album was postponed indefinitely. That's what it says. Um. Now, she did record a song. I've only heard part of this song, but it was for a TV show, which I actually want to try and watch. Uh, it's called, the show is uh, Outlander. It's like a time travel. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it was the Sky, S-K-Y-E, boat song. It's a 19th century Scottish adaptation of a 1782 Gaelic song. Huh. And that is the theme for, I think it was season seven of Outlander. And that was February of this year. Wow. That's when she shared that song. Yeah. So. But Sinead, I like, you know, I love Sinead. I really loved her first three or four mm -hmm. albums. And um, like, it's just sad for me. I think it's sad for me, my own. Uh, wanting to see her perform live. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, let me share one more thing. I was um, seeing her uh, very short clip uh, being interviewed by Dr. Phil. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to guess this is in the middle of her career. Um, but, you know, people keep asking, why do you shave your head? Why do you shave your head? Why is, why is she shave her head? She's so beautiful. I think that was recently. So she, okay. Like, no, not, I, I, not like, like, no, no, I know. it wasn't that, no. it wasn't that recent. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, um, so people can look it up, but, um, she answers it and it's no surprise at all. She's answering it exactly like anyone, um, trained in psychology or knowing any psychology would describe and, and trauma, uh, experienced. She tells Dr. Phil straight up. It's because, um, she said something like this, quote, my mother would say, this is my beautiful daughter, that's Sinead, and this is my ugly daughter, end quote. Mm -hmm. she, would, she would compare them, and it was horrible. Oh, yeah. she, um, she, she said, when you're beautiful, people bully you. Uh, she said, everywhere I go, um, I'm abused and raped, mm -hmm. and I want it to stop. And she's pretty much saying all this. She's spelling it all out. And, uh, you know, you and I know, um, everybody knows she's a beautiful woman. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. She's talented. She's beautiful. And the abuse, that's why the story, that's why her, her lyrics, that's why everything is mm -hmm. about the abuse and trying to find healing. She is beautiful, was beautiful. But she mm -hmm. told Dr. Phil straight up, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is why <laughs> people keep attacking me. You know, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 sad, but it's but there's a reason, you know. And she's mm -hmm. she finally said it to Doctor Phil. The reason, you know, this is why I cut my hair off. Yeah, this is why I don't wear short skirts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Well, I think uh, Why would I do she, that? she was first signed to the record company. They wanted her to look a certain way. And, right. and knowing what she knew, she didn't maybe want to make herself more beautiful. She shaved her head. Yeah. And yeah, mm -hmm. in defiance. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that interview is from 2017. Okay. With Dr. Phil. Yeah, because I know my wife and I yeah. watched that, okay. and that was the time period okay, when yeah. she was in the travel lodge, and she was uh, on social media. Mm -hmm. Do you know everybody knew what she was going through? Yeah. So Dr. Phil, you know. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, I need some ratings. I'm going to try and get Sinead. Yeah. 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 You know, particularly <laughs> like like him. I don't know where he got his. I know. His degree. You know. Uh -huh. I was going to say I know I've seen I've seen him <laughs> No, I've seen people uh, I've seen him cut off people when they were about to say some key wise important things and he cut them off. I've seen yeah. that. Yeah. A little arrogant. Okay, so um yeah, let's Okay, uh my friend, we are ready to get to um our top 5 songs. Is that right? Okay. Mhm. Mm I'm going to go first so you can go last. How's that sound? Sure. Yeah, so um our listeners uh Rob and I have not told each other what our top five songs are. So we're going to hit, I'm going to guess that we hit one. <laughs> I'm going to guess that we hit one. That's the same. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. I know. I know. We have different takes on her, her music and her life. So yeah. 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 Rob, I'm going to start out with uh, number five. I want your hands on me. Okay. That's not on my list. Did you have? No. What's that? That's not on my okay. list. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this song, but um, do you know those? Th you know that dozen or two, that dozen songs in your life where you got to play it loud. You know, it's kind of like uh, in Living Colors, um, Cult of Personality. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. there's these songs that you got to play loud. Well, you have to play this one loud. I turn this one up all the time, and you would mm -hmm. too. Um, I want your hands on me. It starts out with such insanely excellent percussion and rhythm mm -hmm. and um and she ends up screaming at the end you know like she always does um mm -hmm. i don't understand the song so i'm not going to get into it i'm not going to get into it much um um i suppose it's danceable uh, but um but i'm not getting into uh, the meaning that much and uh the song just rocks and it's aggressive and i love it and i think it's um I think it's one of her better songs. And I, I believe that this one, um, I mean, it rocks as much as nothing compares to you as mellow, right? Yeah. Um, kind of the other end of the spectrum. So, uh, yeah, I think this one might have gotten uh, uh, some reviews or some airplay or something. I'm not sure. Um, but I love it. I like, yeah, I like the vocals. They they kind of go into the music, like, the way she's she's not really saying words, but she's vocalizing that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's sung in typical uh, aggressive Sinead uh, style. Yeah. So you, I, I wanted to. Yeah, that, uh, you mentioned the drums in that song, but I don't know if you know it or yeah. not. But her, um, her first husband, his name is John Reynolds. Yeah. He right, has right. he has been um, very uh, supportive, even mm -hmm. after they got divorced. In that, he's been mm -hmm. on almost all her albums, and he is right. the drum. He is the drummer. Yeah, and yeah. and I saw that's excellent. And I saw John Reynolds' name on an album from just a few years back. Like, mm -hmm. why is John Reynolds' name there? Why is he still around? You yeah. know, it was a more recent album and I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And I can't find it right now uh, in my information. But uh, I thought that was interesting. You're exactly right. He was he when Sinead toured, I guess she toured in 2013. That might be her last tour. He was the drummer yeah. in her band even then, 2013. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. OK, so my number five is from Universal Mother, which was 1994. Is fire. Right, I gotta say it's I, I gotta say it's my favorite album, Universal Mother. Okay, so maybe this is. Yeah, on I'm sorry. Go ahead. Fire yeah. on Babylon. Fire on Babylon. That's yeah, my not on my list. Nope. Yeah. But 
but the video i love this video it's like a it's like a 2d effect if you want to call it with the painted backgrounds um hmm. and it's a it's definitely a song about the conflict with her mother uh yeah throughout the video there's this mechanical thing coming down the hall with <laughs> it looks like kitchen utensils attached to it and, wow. and and it looks like it's going to just roll over and crush you i have the feeling that that's her mother <laughs> because yeah yeah the, and at the end of the song she's wearing armor and she's trying to fight it too um mm. and then the the house at the end catches fire but i didn't understand oh, yeah. I, I i think it's the na it looks like it's the house across the street anyway but and it ends with Sinead's by the window and there's flowers blooming so we we can kind of yeah maybe you know surmise what what she's thinking there um yeah so that's my number five it's a great song she great again with her vocals just a couple parts where she's saying fire you know i mean you can feel you can oh, always yeah. feel the emotion oh, yeah yeah and musically i'm hearing that that awesome rhythm and that really full bass you know boom mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. it's just re really cool it fills the whole room yeah, yeah fires of babylon that's that's yeah. insane yeah that's insane <clears throat> all right um switch to number four on, on mine um and uh this is uh this is to mother you from universal mother you didn't have that on your list did no you? no no um so uh yeah just uh it's this song is is about healing and it's about uh mothering and if she could just mother uh the way she was not mothered um i want to read some of the lyrics from it this is to mother you to comfort you to get you through through when the nights are lonely and through when your dreams are only blue um all the pain that you have known and all the violence in your soul, all mistakes made in distress and all your unhappiness, I will take it away with my kiss. I'll give you tenderness. And so, and, and it goes on. And it's just really special to me. It's a very healing song. I printed this song um, as a healing uh, to uh, a friend of mine who lost her baby uh, um, right after just days after birth. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just uh, just looking at the songs, I wrote some lyrics and referenced it and uh, let her know about the song. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's about mothering, about uh, being a being a good mother is what uh, it's her hope <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. to be a good mother. So I really it's a very soft and sweet song, which uh, I think a lot of them are off of Universal Mother. Yeah. Or no, that's off of, I was wrong. That's off of Gospel Oak. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know that album. Yes. Yeah, this is to Mother You is off of Gospel Oak. Sorry about that. Yeah. So that's my, uh, that's my number four. Okay. So my number four, it's kind of a tie and it's actually, I'd put this album. <laughs> No, it's um from it's from i am i not your girl which uh -huh. is from 1992 and that's the album where she did older maybe you want to call them jazz standards mm -hmm. um but don't cry for me argentina i just yeah. love her version and it's tied with i want to be loved by you which is kind of a fun song mm -hmm. um and Sinead described this as the songs I grew up listening to and that made me want to be a singer. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. So this was a surprising album when it came out because, you know, you had the, this was her third album and here she is just doing old songs. Standards. Standards. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I do love, love that song as well it's uh it's so it's so power that song's powerful and rich yeah mm -hmm. and then this 
this will link i'm just giving you a heads up um this will link with my number three mm -hmm. uh but i don't want to i won't get into that till we get to number three but i yeah, just we'll make a mental that, note on that but i just love that she hearing her branch out into you know and you could you could understand then what she was capable of doing these songs yeah so. yeah so that was my number four all right uh, let's get to our number three here um don't know if you've got it or not i i think you might have this one i am stretched on your grave no oh. <laughs> okay um so i am i'm stretched on your grave uh starts out um with uh drum pro program it's not uh it's not uh, acoustic drums it starts out with drum programming and it's just a, a loop of drums and and hi hat mm -hmm. and it's just it just rolls it's just it's just smooth um i would expect all the bass and drums are synthesized on but i haven't researched it so this is a uh a 17th century uh, that's 1600s Irish poem of the same name, hmm. and I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read the Gaelic <laughs> <laughs> title, yeah. which means I'm stretched on your grave. Um, ironically, it's um, it's translated into English by someone named O'Connor, Frank O'Connor. Um, but uh, I don't have all the lyrics right here in front of me. But um, so so she took that. Irish poem from the 1600s and put it to a real cool rhythm and lots of um, and that's the song that ends with what sounds like uh, you can imagine it's Celtic music you know just wailing mm -hmm. along with the rhythms and um, I was on uh, TikTok and uh, a couple of uh, creators were talking about Sinead's death and uh one of the TikTok creators said this was her favorite song. She mm. she listens to a lot, but this is this is that creator's favorite song. Um, so I love it. I uh, I can't wait to hear it again. So that's mm -hmm. my number three. So my number three is you do something to me. Now wow. this, you know I don't have that one. <laughs> so this this goes into my number four because. I'm thinking, and this is from 1990, and I'm thinking her doing this song, it's a Cole Porter song, right? Oh, I didn't know. And I'm thinking maybe she got the idea to do the next album, which was two years later. But this is this album, I didn't mention the album yet. I don't know if you had it, but... It's called Red Hot and Blue. And oh, yeah. Was... I never owned it. I, yeah. Yeah, I borrowed it from you. Yeah. Yeah. This album, I am pretty positive, got me into older music. Like even, say, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, you know, yeah. Billy Holiday, where yeah. I didn't, up until now, I didn't really listen to, you know, the older class, you know, the crooners and, the jazz yeah, yeah. or even was in the jazz this really yeah. i love this album so Sinead is on this of course with you do something to me and it's i'm going to download it from apple music i'm going to yeah. get a red hot and blue i got to get red hot and blue on my yeah. set uh, playlist yeah and me loving Sinead, and this song is kind of sensual beautiful like her voice that song yeah it's just like almost as if like Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe <laughs> had sang it or like, you know, happy birthday. Not, not quite like that, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's my uh, number three. Mm -hmm. You do something to me. And, you know, it's one of those where I haven't listened to that album. I don't own it in a long time, but I think Iggy Pop's yeah, on yeah. there. Like there's a lot of interesting people on there. I'll probably go see if I can find it on Apple Music and give it because I I yeah, listened yeah. to that album a lot at the time. So yeah, awesome, awesome. So uh, number two, um, I know you don't have the same number one as me. I just I know that, um, 
but I'm thinking that this will be the one that we're going to share. Are you ready? Okay. The Emperor's New Clothes. That's my number two. So we can both. <laughs> All right. So yeah. we get, that's great. We get to talk about, yeah. about it. Um, this song is just, it's, it's just mind blowing. Um, so let's talk about it together. Mm -hmm. um, lyrics. I'm going to jump right to the lyrics. Uh, millions of people offer advice and say how I should be, but they're twisted and there'll never be any influence on me, but you will always be. Um, and she says, if I treated you mean, it's because I'm pregnant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, everyone can see what's going on. Here's the key words in the whole song. It's so beautiful. It gives me chills. Mm -hmm. They laugh because they know they're untouchable. Not because what I said was wrong. I'm going to say that again. They yeah. laugh because they know they're untouchable. Not because what I said was wrong. Yeah. Um, and then it says, uh, I'll live by my own policies. I will sleep with a clear conscience and I will sleep in peace. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, the, the, the title, of course, we know, uh, comes from an old story where uh, called The Emperor Has No Clothes. And in the story, um, the emperor, the dictator, the leader mm -hmm. who can't be touched, um, he's naked, <laughs> uh -huh. but nobody can tell him that because they'll die. They'll get, oh, they'll yeah. get busted. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yes, um, yes, yes. You look beautiful people, emperor. Yes. You know, yeah. People that are so powerful that they, everybody around them is just, yes, yes. I mean, we can mention yes, some people, yes, but I'm not, yes. but we know who they are. Yes. And yeah. it, now she changed I think it to it's the emperor's great... new clothes. And I think lyrically, it, <laughs> it, it, it sounds like this song was something that just poured out of her. Oh, yeah. That, that she sat down and just, it's so personal. And it's right after she oh, had yeah. a, a baby, she talks about how mm -hmm. hard it is being a mother, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. And just all the things going. But I, I have the feeling, I don't know the history of the song, how she wrote it. But I just... Mm -hmm think she had this all this brewing in her head sat down and probably wrote it in 10 minutes i don't know it that's what it right, right. it goes together so well right and at the same time let's talk musically about the song for a second um simon reynolds from melody maker says um he talks about it and then he says it's so radically minimalist it doesn't even have a tune and so I'm thinking of the song in my head and, and its fullness and its richness, but it's not a tune that you're going to play or sing, you know, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, whoa, there's, she, she's just belting it out, you know? Oh yeah. It's like, wow. <laughs> she's just singing it over top of like something they already had like worked out or <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so David, uh, let's see, from, uh, I don't even, Quantic, from NME, New Musical Express, um, he says about the song, very heavy, the song is very heavy on specifics and is full of not very obscure lines. In other words, she's pretty straightforward. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, he says, he quotes, uh, he quotes the song and says, he thinks I just became famous, and that's what messed me up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good line, too. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Now, it's, now, I wonder who the he is. Is she talking about her husband? Yeah. <laughs> who is mm -hmm. she talking? Yeah, yeah. He? And is this, is this, is this 19, 19, what, what, uh, I don't know what year this is. I'm trying she, to think where it is in her life. But, she could mm -hmm. have been sitting at the kitchen table writing this and her husband walks in and he says something to her. Yeah. And then, yeah. then she wrote that line. <laughs> yeah. She's sitting on the, she's sitting on the couch. She's slouching yeah. on the couch and she's writing mm -hmm. in her book. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, another lyric, you know, Another another lyric from the song 
that's that's just you know able to be quoted on a poster or a shirt maybe it sounds mean but i really don't think so you asked for the truth and i told you mm -hmm. yes <laughs> that might be you asked for the truth <laughs> you asked for the truth and i told you what, what do you what do you expect from me right <laughs> okay number one yeah okay. you want me to go or you want to go you can go all right so um hey at least i was guessing i guessed that we would match what one i think mm -hmm. yeah and i guess it would be that one so I, okay. i'm getting some good guesses here <laughs> so i'm guessing that you don't have this for number one okay and it is thank you for hearing me no no i don't okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, I just watched the video uh, from a late night show and uh, watched the video of her performing this. And I like it as much as the studio. Um, and so um, the song is uh, kind of trance-like, starts off slow and builds to a climax and then gets slow again. But what she's... Um, what she's doing is just saying very simple verses and uh, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for not hurting me. And I think one or two more and comes back again to um, thank you for hearing me. And uh, it's, it's, it's rhythmic it's trance like very much like you described uh, ghost land being trance like it's uh, similar to that um i found it interesting um a lot of this music that is in the vein of Sinead, you and i we find it on our own you know mm -hmm. i found gospel oak which is another great album that people should check out gospel Oak. i've got to check that out mother the yeah, because you mentioned gospel. Uh, it's, I think to it, me. Yes, I believe it's an EP because it's got like okay. four or five five songs on. It. Yeah, but Gospel Oak and and Universal Mother they're similar. I bet you they're they're a year apart. Um, but we find this stuff on our own is what I was saying, and um, this song, my number one, it hit top ten in Poland. It hit number three on the charts in the UK, excuse me, number 13 on mm -hmm. the charts in the UK. A song that, that nobody else that I know knows the song. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? I mean, no one's listening to it. And it was number 14 in Scotland. So 13 and 14 in Scotland and the UK. In other words, people are listening to it. They know it. Not in the US. And, mm -hmm. and I can't quite figure that out. And you can draw your own conclusions. I got some ideas, but... Yeah. There's something to that, um, that graciousness, uh, thank you for hearing me. And it makes it, you put out a song like that, and it's, it's number 13 in the charts mm -hmm. in Europe. Um, they mentioned Iceland. Oh, look at that. Um, not that people care about Iceland music, but you and I do. Mm -hmm. In Iceland, it was number five on wow. the charts. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so... Um, and Just then, one and then Bjork, here. And then uh, Bjork was like number, had the other nine on the top 10. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. She just, she made it, she yeah. fit into Bjork's uh, yeah. uh, top. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Baltimore Sun uh, called it Bone Simple Melody, D Hypnotic Pulse. And it expresses a gratitude so heartfelt, it seems more like a prayer than a song. Mm -hmm. and, I just um that's oh, all sorry. yeah that's all I got to say on that go ahead I just thought of something we've never talked about is how in other countries are there like top 40 more like obscure not like pop dance than the US where we're you yeah. know yeah. shaking our booties and you know maybe it's more of an intelligent <laughs> top 40. And maybe that's Believe why so. some of these songs get on the top 10 and they don't in the U.S. You I know? believe 
believe so. I believe yeah. you're onto it. I, I agree with you completely. Um, the song is slow and mellow and prayerful. People mm -hmm. in Europe, half the people can enjoy that. Half yeah. the people understand that. But when you get record executives, what are they going to say to thank you for hearing me? They're mm -hmm. going to say, that's not going to sell. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not going to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Put put away the nipple tassels, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> So my number one, you know, oh. I know. Now let me let me let me try to think. Let me let me think. Um, oh 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 oh! I got it. I got it. I'm mm -hmm. gonna try and guess. <laughs> okay, you probably know. You ready? I'm gonna guess, and then I'm only gonna do one guess. Mandinka. Right. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I ruined well, it for you. Well, what's interesting is that we, neither one of us, and I just posted last night on Facebook that Sinead O'Connor had more than one song and her most something like her her hits or her better songs were ones that she had written meaning nothing compares to you right. is like all over the place like that's her only song you know but if you're a true fan right. you'll you know, you right. know that, and that's, that isn't the case. I'm going to repeat what I said. Every news article was nothing compares to you ripping up the Pope's picture. Like, and, yeah. <laughs> and that, that, yeah. And that, that was what she, that, like, that was that, that's all she was. No. Mm -hmm. it. So I always like Mandinka. I didn't really know what it meant. It has a simple guitar riff. And just give me one second. I'm going to see if I yeah. can. Uh, it's only three chords yeah in the truth yeah. yeah so um it is it's kind of uh musically it's kind of that simple it's a, it's it's the um, uh simple rock style with the with the uh like you said it's only three chords it's got a real gonna, simple uh rock feel to it i'm gonna it. probably mess it up even though it's three chords that's oh, okay give us give us something yeah. live my friend give us something live let me see here. <laughs> okay. It's something like this. Well, that's not it. Let me practice here. I'm not playing it in the right, you know, but those are the chords, you know. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, so kids, that's an E, a B, and an A. I'm sure it oh, sounds wow. better on an e electric guitar. E B A. Yeah, I should try that on my uh, on my steel pans. Yeah. But you really need an electric guitar, you know, to pull it off. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah, you need an electric guitar, but I'm gonna bring the steel pans over, you know. So let's okay. uh, let's do that on it. Let's do the E B and A here. <laughs> it's like a, a reggae. Anyway, okay. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> that works. That was that was like the reggae version. That sounded like, yeah, still drum. Was that still drums? Yes, it was. Yeah, still oh, pan okay. drums. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There you go. In my kitchen. Who yeah. would have who would have thought who would have thunk it? Yeah. So, so I'm going through the lyrics of of your favorite mm -hmm. song, and maybe maybe uh, you did too. Trying to. Trying to get something out of that, I, I'm going to just read two lines, not much. Um, uh, and they say, see how the glass is raised. I have refused to take part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. It's defiance I, again. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's a song that doesn't really mean, I don't know, maybe it was just sounded good. Yeah. She, Right. It. Yeah. And 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 what is Mandinka? Is it a name? Is it a place? Okay. Is it a well, thing? Yes, Mandinkas are an African tribe. But in the song oh. she says, "I do know Mandinka." Like it's I always thought it was a person. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So it's yeah. a tribe. But the way she says it, it's like it's a person. I do know Mandink. I'm pretty sure she's saying Mandinka and not Mandinkas. You know, the song's not Man, you know. 
Payets, yeah, yeah. Mandinka. So they're mentioned in a very well-known book, and it was a TV show, and uh -huh. it's Ro Roots by Alex Haley. No way! Yeah. Wow. Which I always wanted to read. I just um, went on Amazon and I, because I always look at how many pages. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm reading, I'm in the middle of a book now, but it's 800 pages. But I do eventually would love to read that book. Um, so Sue Danko from Smash Hits opined that this rasping, raw, rock, punk esque thing is destined to be possibly the most absolutely brilliant single to never be a hit. <laughs> to never the most be a brilliant hit. single to never be a hit. Maybe in Poland. I didn't yeah, check the yeah. charts. Yeah. And you know, as we wind down here, Rob, that's that's just um that's just Sinead, isn't it? A brilliant single never to be a hit destined yeah. not to be a hit mm -hmm. wow that kind of brings it together for Sinead now tonight wow I'm gonna listen to this which I all I right actually... so my friend Rob is showing up uh, the photo he's got up on the screen for me it's a giant eye and it sure enough looks like Sinead's eye and it's Sinead O'Connor live in Rotterdam 1990 yeah. Now there's not many songs on here. It's not like a full concert. Um but I got this probably a year or two ago. I think it was record store day. Um I and it it's oh it's black vinyl. <laughs> it's not color vinyl. Oh throw it away. Yeah. It's black vinyl. Yeah. That's that's not clear or swirl. So the songs are um uh nothing compares to you. The last day of our acquaintance. That's a good song. Yeah, yeah. So that's side one. <laughs> like four songs on here. And then side two, Irish Ways and Irish Laws. I don't even know that one. And then mm. and then Troy, which is oh yeah. Off the first album. So this should be interesting. Yeah. So I'm gonna listen to that yeah. and I thought I had Lion and the Cobra, believe it or not, because I, I sold all my albums yeah. back in the yeah. '90s, and now I'm rebuying them because I'm almost up mm -hmm. to 400 albums. I got to stop. Wow. So <laughs> I thought for sure I had Lion and Cobra. I think I was gonna buy it, like because I'm like I love that album, and I don't have it right. So yeah. I found one and. Album prices are like ridiculous. They're getting more ridiculous. Um, yeah. Because I got like a mint copy of the original and it was like $40. And we're not talking like remastered or, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's, that's so much money. Yeah. 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 Hey, speaking of Lion and Cobra, a um, little bit of, um, there's a little bit of trivia there i never knew until today that the intro for never gets old when someone is speaking gaelic mm -hmm. that's not sinead okay you know it's the gaelic that you don't understand mm -hmm. it's a woman's mm -hmm. voice it's enya yeah. oh wow <laughs> it's, it's enya he, mm -hmm. she, he's like hey you want to uh you want to say this uh the this intro on and i don't even know what she's saying because it's in gaelic yeah it's enya i didn't know that it's pretty we were cool. just watching something last i think it was last night or the night before and i could barely hear like i could hear the song was very low but i knew mm -hmm. right away it was enya and it was yeah. that popular song you know yeah yeah and uh, it just i just forgot the name up of it, a little yeah. bit yeah mm -hmm. so yeah that's cool so i guess that does yeah. it um you know we just wanted to do something to talk about Sinead and her music mm -hmm. and her, her, her life and, uh, you know, ended way too short. I mean, I mean, she wasn't yeah. like, you know, 18, but she was, you know, she could have lived a lot longer, you know? Yeah. And I mean, she inspired she's, she's a lot like of people. our, our age, you know? 
she inspired a lot of people. She uh, inspired a lot of musicians, especially female musicians. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right. Well, listeners, yeah. thanks for spending time with us. Thanks for spending the, uh, the entire time with us. If you get here towards the end and uh, we appreciate your listening. Yeah. Thanks for listening. All right. Turn off the TV, turn off your phone and turn up the music. <laughs> You've been listening to No Good Music, intro and exit music by the band 99%. Today's show is produced and edited by Rob J. Lilly and recorded at the Did You Say 7 Studios in Washington, New Jersey. You can find No Good Music on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Pandora, and almost anywhere you listen to podcasts. 